I came to realize that I was fulfilling this false sense of contribution and satisfaction because I was at the intersection where they weren't aligned with things. Yeah. So I went out and bought a Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. what they got me debt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was doing all these things. Yeah. And then from a sacrifice standpoint, when I realized like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I can't go into a, into a brand new business mm -hmm. with $80,000 of debt mm -hmm. driving a Benz. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. And so you have to, I had to get real and have a heart to heart conversation with my other Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. So you guys, I'm super excited about my conversation on tonight. I've been on an entrepreneurial kick. I've been on this kick of having a, a very honest and open, transparent conversation about entrepreneurship. And tonight is definitely no different. I am sitting here with KG. And I'm super excited to talk to her um, about entrepreneurship, and you're gonna know why in just one in just one moment. So, KG, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation thank with me tonight. Thank you for I'm honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me to have <laughs> yeah, the conversation. Absolutely, it's so absolutely. important. It's really important. So, as you know, I like to start off every episode with just talking about how I came to know and meet the person that I'm conversating with. So, you guys, very simply, KG and I met on LinkedIn. I think I ran across your, either your profile or an article that you wrote on LinkedIn. I know it was on LinkedIn. Yeah, it was sure. LinkedIn. It was LinkedIn. Most people are sleeping on LinkedIn. Yeah, they are. I'm one of them. No, you weren't because we were we got connected. Yeah, but I still need to do better. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to do better. But yeah, so I ran across our profile, connected with KG on LinkedIn. Then we ended up on a telephone conversation where she told me about this was last year, October. No, last year, August, September. And she was telling me about a documentary that you had, right? What was the yeah, name of it? I Am You. I Am You. Dimensions of Diversity. Dimensions of Diversity. And so I, she sent me a clip, and I saw it, loved it, was definitely going to go out and support it. But you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, that I had a death in the family. So I wasn't able to go out to the premiere. However, I heard it was really good like friends in passing wow yeah and just in conversation wow. in passing was like you know what i went and i saw this this documentary and i was just like wait a minute kg <laughs> yeah, i just like yeah i was like oh my goodness i wanted to go and see it so i heard it was really good yeah it was really good so um thank you for doing that part two coming out hey stay tuned okay stay tuned. It, it was it was it was hard work Oh. It was hard work because I felt like from a society that we forgot yeah. how to have human and human connections mm. and we needed to move the conversation further. When people think yeah. of diversity and inclusion, yeah. they automatically think of race, race gender, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's it. That's it. But it's so much more. So yeah. just series number one, as you know, we talked yeah. about mental health. We talked mm -hmm. about white privilege. Mm -hmm. We talked about military sexual trauma, which most people had no idea what that was. Oh, I mean, God. we talked about that is so prevalent, all the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. So I heard it was really good. And um, I took a little bit of a sabbatical from the business because I was mourning my, the death of my brother. And so, you know, when I was ready to go back full throttle, Thank you. Reached back out and connected with KG again and realized that at that time that she had the nap bar coming out hey. that she was going to launch. And so we're going to definitely talk more about the nap bar because the whole conversation is <laughs> going to, you guys will see, just, just keep watching. So KG, tell us a little bit more about you and your business. Where do I start with me? So I... <laughs> I am an avid napper. I'm a lover of 80s music. My vices are sunglasses, socks, and watches. If I could get away with just wearing that all day, you good. That's all I'm wearing. I love it. Sunglasses, socks, and and watches. And watches. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, lover of humanity. I absolutely 
love, love, love to connect with people and allow for my heart to connect with people and my soul to connect with people. Yeah. If I could do that all day, yeah. I had a great day. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You have a really good personality and I love your energy because I love your nap bar commercials that you do on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sis. Yeah, and you always it. so happy and energetic every time I meet you and I love that. We need more of that positive energy because it's contagious. Well, it works. It's, it's, it's work. Most people think I just wake up like this. For the most part, I do. <laughs> but I also work to make sure I wake up yeah, like that too. Yeah. I have rituals that I do at night. I have rituals mm -hmm. that I do in the morning. Mm -hmm. I meditate. Ooh. I don't sleep with my phone. So the first okay. thing that I do when I close my eyes, yeah. before I close my eyes, the last thing I should say I do, mm -hmm. when I close my eyes and get ready for bedtime mm -hmm. is I'm running through a gratitude list. Mm -hmm. I yeah. pray with my wife and mm -hmm. then that's it. I'm not scrolling aimlessly. Yeah. My, yeah. my brain isn't clouded with things. Yeah. The last thing is usually clouded up with is gratitude. Like yeah. what was I gratitude? What was I grateful for for that, that day? Ooh, Same thing in the I morning. Love that. I love that. You know, I have a book, 31 Days of Truth, Manifest Your Passion, Power, of Perseverance. And I tell oh, people, all, yeah, I tell people all the time to just read a chapter of my book before you go to bed because I believe that how you go to sleep is how you wake up. Mm -hmm. So if you go to sleep thinking about gratitude, everything that you think you're thankful for, or reading something positive that's uplifting, then that's how you're going to actually wake up the next morning. Totally. So yeah, so Same it's, thing it's in a part of the practice. Same thing in the morning. Same thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm running through. I have a thing before I get my phone and I let the world into my space. I protect yeah. my space before I let the world in. Mm. That's a conversation right there. Protecting our space before we let the world in. But listen, we have to. We, we have to protect our space, not just from the world, but we also have to. It's one of those things. I posted mm -hmm. it not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Is We have to pre protect our creative space and our vision yeah. for people who just simply don't have the capacity to understand our greatness. Ooh. Can you say that again for the people in the background? <laughs> I need a rewind, a rewind button. <laughs> we have to learn to protect our creative space yeah. and not share our vision with people who no longer and who don't have the capacity to understand our greatness. Oh, oh my God. I love that. And that comes with self-awareness as well, you know, because we outgrow people every single day yep. and what god downloads on us he doesn't download that same vision to the other person so people don't understand so you may look a little crazy which we gonna we gonna Let's we go we gonna talk about that it. down <laughs> that down we gonna talk about it people gonna pay you for a nap <laughs> girl we go we gonna talk about it tonight <laughs> so you guys these last few weeks like i mentioned earlier i've been all about entrepreneurship last week I had a conversation with Michelle Avalos, who is the director of operations with Impact Hub. And shout we out to Impact. Yeah, shout out to Impact. And we talked about how to use self-awareness to determine whether or not entrepreneurship is for you. Because right now, entrepreneurship is the lick. It's the thing to do right now. It's what's hot in these streets. Everybody is trying to do it, and everybody probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> but because we have entrepreneurs on social media, who's making it seem like it's the best thing ever. Nobody is talking about the behind the scenes, right? The moments where you're in your corner crying, the moments when the sales are not coming in, when you're not making any money. Nobody's talking about those particular situations. And so we talked about it last week. Go back and check the replay. It was really good. And so tonight I want to talk about, just in case you showed up live and you decided that, okay, I hear, I heard the good, the bad and the ugly entrepreneurship is for me. So tonight I want to talk to KG about how do you self-awareness to launch a business, a product or service that's different from the norm? Because you guys, she launched nap bar. How many nap bars have you seen around Houston or anywhere for that matter? So when I heard that she was launching in April, mm -hmm. right? In April, 29th. I was like, oh yeah, I got to have her on the show because we need to talk about that because to launch a business that's completely different from the norm takes self-awareness. It sure does. It takes self-awareness. And it takes a lot of guts, mm -hmm. a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to own your own truth. Mm. You have to be comfortable in your skin. Yes. And you most definitely have to commit to, Ma Malcolm Gladwell said that in order for you to become a subject matter expert, mm -hmm. you have to commit to at minimum 10,000 plus hours mm, of research. Of research. I've committed to 10,000 plus hours of research. So it's not like I just jumped out here and was like, oh, I'm doing that bar because I, I'm, I'm tired of taking a nap yeah. in my car, which was the reason why. But well, who else was tired of taking naps in their car? Yeah. And then for those people, because that's my avatar, that's my niche, that's my niche, mm -hmm. what do they want at Nap Bar? Mm -hmm. 
and the reason why you have all of these things and we yeah. are able to cater to all five of your senses, mm -hmm. you smell, <clears throat> hear, touch, touch feel. Mm -hmm. What's the last one? Um, sight. sight. All five senses was because I simply put out a call on Facebook, a poll and mm -hmm. said, hey, if we did this, what would you want there? Mm. And if so, how much would you pay for it? Mm. So I didn't create that bar. <clears throat> Selfishly, I created it for me, but it was really truly for everyone out there in yeah. the world for the yeah. masses. Yeah. So, and we got to the root of the problem. So, to answer your initial question is, mm -hmm. how do you how do you create a business that's not in a saturated yes. market that's in a complete white yes. space where mm -hmm. you know we we're having our biggest pain point is when people ask, what do you do at Nap Bar? You just nap. <laughs> that's it because it's such a innovative, progressive idea. But the, mm -hmm. but the baseline of your, your question, the answer is that yeah. you have to get to the root of the problem that you're solving. Mm. So if you want to go out and create mm -hmm. an innovative business, what's mm -hmm. the root of the problem that you're solving? For yeah. us, it's a 411 billion B, billion dollar economic loss in the U.S. 411 billion? Billion due to sleep deprivation. Oh my goodness. So that really? means it basically equates to 1.2 Americans called off working days 1.2 working days is what americans called off because they were exhausted or tired wow so imagine from a productivity level for my corporate wellness people who are listening to this yeah. is what if you had a nap bar on site which yeah. we mm -hmm. cater to and we provide okay. and you allow mm -hmm. your people to take a nap every single day mm -hmm. imagine what's going to happen to your productivity it's going to go up we have a calculation that we show people that, sh that proves the Wall Street Journal's theory. They mm -hmm. just published a report on Mondays are the most unproductive day in the entire week. No That's surprise crazy. there. Because I love Mondays. That's it's, crazy. it's Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to be in corporate. I used to have the Sunday, the Sunday night blues. Mm -hmm. I would get the butterflies in my stomach thinking mm -hmm. about what I had to do the next day. Mm -hmm. I was The Blackberry is already full from email Blackberry. 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 Did we just the, say, <laughs> say the millennials that's watching, do you know what a Blackberry is? <laughs> right. If anybody does, you got a nap. First person that knows what a Blackberry is, you get a nap on me. But yeah, like it's, it's, it was one of those things. And the Wall Street Journal published a, 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 doc, a report and said that the first four hours of, of every single Monday mm -hmm. is the most unproductive because people stayed out too late on Sunday fun day. They have the Sunday mm -hmm. blues. They stayed up too late cheering for the team or they just simply are not engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Period. That is crazy. I didn't know that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. I, I did not know that. It's the research. I, I'm the type of person where I actually like Mondays. I think I'm not, I think I'm on an anomaly because I actually like Mondays because, but you know what? I had to change my mindset about Mondays in order That's for me to, to like it because I look at Mondays as a time to just start over, hit that reset button. And I figure, I figure that if I approach Monday as a new beginning, then it's going to set the tone for my week. Absolutely. So I had to change my mindset behind it. It's all about the mindset. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, entre being an entrepreneur is 100% about your mindset. Absolutely. Like, are you going to stay in that moment? Because mm -hmm. I committed, 2017 was a, a, was a doozy of a year for me. And on my birthday in that year, I committed that I would no longer have bad days. Mm, now, I have bad you. moments. I might have a yeah. gazillion bad moments in yeah. one day, but I, I'm never going to have a bad day because I realized from a mindset, mindset standpoint yeah. that I can shift my thinking at any mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And then just be present to the fact that it's beautiful outside. Look yeah. at those green trees over there. There's life. Mm -hmm. There's life around me and there's yeah. life inside of me. So nothing really is that bad. Even on my worst day, even when I think about the mm -hmm. idea of my mom isn't here to come to the grand opening for my nap bar. Mm -hmm. Even on those bad moments, I still can be thankful that she sacrificed ways a lot so that I wouldn't mm -hmm. have to play small and I can have a nap bar. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that because so many people needed to hear that because number one we're not being present in the moment and i think it's because we just lack self-awareness you know there are so many things that we want to do but we're too afraid to do it because we're afraid of how we're going to look to everybody else right so we tend to not pursue our dreams you know not go out and launch that net bar and you kind of alluded to it earlier how you know people kind of looked at you crazy like really a net bar like well, i mean do we, you were, mind we were talking at dinner. about that a little bit yeah little we bit i that? can tell you specifically we were mm -hmm. at a dinner with a friend and mm -hmm. it was right when i started polling on facebook and 
I was getting ready for my first pitch. I mean, that bar literally was a concept April of 2018. Okay. And then, as, as I mentioned earlier, we launched April 29th, 2019. Wow. So literally in one year. That's pretty fast. That's including the fact that I probably walked away a couple of times. I quit the business a couple of times and then came back to it. Mm -hmm. And then we just kept it moving. Yeah. But I, we had dinner. The wife and I had dinner with a mutual friend. And they were mm -hmm. like, so what's this nap bar about? Mm -hmm. Like, what's people, like, mm -hmm. people gonna pay you for a nap? Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, it just didn't feel good anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and and what people don't realize, whenever you have a friend that is pivoting, because keep in mind, I was mm -hmm. about to transition from my cushy corporate executive job. And now Ooh, I'm going to talk about be, that part too. Yeah. yeah that so, part. I'm, so I've uh, your friend who's going into entrepreneurship has all these things swirling <clears> around <throat> in their head and they're vulnerable, <clears throat> they're insecure, they are broken open, meaning that they're in the most insecure, vulnerable state that they possibly can be, but broken open is good because yeah. you're open to feel all the things. Yeah. And it became clear to me that it was pruning season. Mm. So perhaps that friendship was outgrown because if I have to explain to you about what's what my vision, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they didn't have the capacity to understand my greatness because mm -hmm. everybody kept me in that box in corporate America. Mm. And so it, it was just a pivot away from the, from the, from the friendship. Now yeah. who's to say it's not, completely done yeah. we might pivot back but mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. this in this season yeah where i am yeah i'm planted for a reason yeah and most people feel like they're buried but they're really planted so when you're buried you're like oh my god like i can't get out of this i can't get out of this but when you're planted there's a reason for you to be there there's something mm -hmm. for you to do or perhaps it's just there for you to grow Mm. and get ready for harvest mm. and then when it's harvest time yeah. everything you're gonna need is gonna be there and then you yeah. can get up and go yeah yeah man that's good you know oh we have to pay attention to who we share our dreams to because depending on who that person is in your life they can literally talk you out of yeah, if pursuing you let them, your dreams. If you let if them. You, if you let them. They can literally talk you out of pursuing your dreams. So we have to be self-aware in that moment to know that, okay, this is this person's idea or this person's fears that they're trying to project, right? Because everybody thinks that their security with a corporate job, that's not necessarily the case. No. That's not There's necessarily the case. They're announced every day. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of the year with the government shutdown. That should be... Prime example, right? Prime example. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not an advocate of saying everybody's got to be an entrepreneur. Absolutely. But some, we need Absolutely people not. in corporate America yes. in those spaces. But I am saying that we should always have a backup plan mm -hmm. in terms of what's the side hustle. Mm -hmm. We should always have, you know, I, I read a book, I read, and mm -hmm. one of the, the common denominators on millionaires is that they have at minimum seven Strange streams income. of income. So if you're in corporate <laughs> America, what else can you be doing to, to make your money grow? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're right. Um, not to say to leave your job and go to, to entrepreneurship, but don't let somebody talk you out of not leaving your corporate job for another corporate job. Because just because you had a, a good cushy corporate job, you're probably not even happy at that job. Have you hit the ceiling on, you know, how many raises or how far you can go up the ladder? Is it time for you to go do that? Because a lot of people get stuck in, in jobs because they're working with a well-known company that's mm -hmm. been around for so long mm -hmm. and they're afraid to make that next move. So whatever move that is for you, just watch who you're talking to so you're not being um, discouraged to make the necessary move. You know, when I, cause I came in, took a nap, obviously, of course, hopefully that's obvious. You know, I told my husband about it and he had the same reaction like, a nap bar. So you want me to go and pay? No, no shade, hubby. No shade. Real, it's just real talk. It's real talk. He was like, so you want me to go and pay to sleep somewhere else? I was like, considering that you up late at night <laughs> and you can barely fall asleep, why not? Right? Tell us about the experience at nap bar. Because that's one of our biggest pain points. Like, yeah. why would I nap? here and not nap at home well because at home you have a spouse you perhaps have kids you have a pet you have the amazon delivery guy that's ringing your doorbell when you don't know it you have your phone uh -huh. you have you don't you probably don't have a soundproof isolated room uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you might not have aromatherapy filaments. You might mm -hmm. not want to get into some pajamas. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about the dishes that are in the sink from mm -hmm. last night that you forgot to put in the <laughs> dishwasher and start the dishwasher. You mm -hmm. are constantly in chaos in your mind when you're at home. Mm -hmm. But when you're here, you might be able to allude to this. You're unplugged. You don't yeah. have your phone. Yeah. There's, as I mentioned earlier, we're engaging all five of the senses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have mood lighting that mm -hmm. also has been proven. Studies have proven that it impacts your your mood and also mm -hmm. it, it helps with inflammation mm. like the, the light therapy that we have inside of there this is very uh -huh. intentional yeah it, from ancient history that that's the way they cured ailments mm. light therapy light therapy light therapy we have brain waves Isn't that something? brain yeah. waves that immediately mm -hmm. allow mm -hmm. you to relax they mm -hmm. release melatonin in your body to fight up to 97 percent yeah curated by a good friend of mine who's a doctor but also is a dj on the side mm -hmm. they give you a pre-game nap shot that's mm -hmm. infused with all the green things that you need and we included and diffused ashwagandha mm -hmm. which is a root that promotes rest and relaxation mm -hmm. from the feel standpoint you're sleeping on a hundred percent hyperallergenic mattress yeah it give you the the eye mask. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you you, it, you name it is here. Yeah. Even the amenities in the bathroom, mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. a hundred percent organic products in there. From the shower, mm -hmm. we have toms mm -hmm. for our mouthwash for mm -hmm. our toothpaste. silk pajamas. Silk pajamas. So you literally, no one is usually going into all that effort to take a nap at home. I know I sure yeah. don't. I, I still don't. nap at home. I napped yesterday at home, mm -hmm. but I didn't put on any pajamas. I just mm -hmm. jumped in the bed and went for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sometimes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because I was trying to, and I'm still working on the hubby, to come and, and take a nap so he can see what a nice, restful sleep feels like. And to also get some tips and tricks on how to just get rested get rest at home. Because well, he's just a night owl. He's up all types of, all types of, um, time in the morning and i just don't know why so i'm working on it we're gonna get him in here to get him rested Let's do because it. uh rest is important tell us why it's important for living our truth i mean rest unblocks the brain fog mm. let's just start there mm. and it also here at nat bar mm. the rest that you get is like mm -hmm. solidarity mm -hmm. solidarity creates clarity mm -hmm. clarity creates understanding mm -hmm. understanding creates awareness oh wow so there's not it's not odd for someone to come in they're like oh they're just they're just kind of all over the place and they can yeah. shovel when they get here and they're yeah. like i've got everything that's going wrong today is going wrong and i've got this big problem at work i can't quite figure out and then they go in we take their plug their, their phone they come out and it's like i just figured out how to solve my problem well in 26 minutes <laughs> you can go inside of here unplug and shut your brain off or it's not about napping and people assume it's called nap bar yeah because it's fun but mm -hmm. it's really truly a place for you to unplug relax rejuvenate to rest and if you so happen to nap you nap if you don't mm -hmm. you don't yeah yeah you know i've not here not when i was here but i have experienced going to sleep and waking up with some brilliant ideas or a solution to a problem that i'm having within my business so rest is definitely important but it's crazy because you know you may see across social media and you can speak on this you may see across social media how you know sleep is for suckers oh man <laughs> the culture the culture really has us sucked into this whole yeah. i grind hard i sleep when i did listen i used to subscribe to i sleep when i'm dead matter of yeah. fact i have a t-shirt that I didn't throw away to remind mm -hmm. me of how I had to change my mindset. Mm -hmm. You have to sleep now because you, I don't know how else you're going to be able to function yeah. and operate at your maximum capacity. Because mm -hmm. the goal for me is I always want to be at the intersection where my maximum contribution meets my satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Because if those two are on the line, then what am mm -hmm. I doing? Yeah. And rest is the, is, is the critical mm -hmm. component to that. We yeah, haven't even discussed health. Rest, a lot of people think, well, I gained 10, 15 pounds and I don't know why. My diet's the same, but check your rest. Check your rest. How check often your are you sleeping at night? Mm -hmm. Cholesterol is up, check your rest. Check your rest. Blood pressure, check your rest. Check your rest. And then I also, you guys already know that I went through a 31-day detox, a herbal detox. Dr. Bobby Price, he's a holistic doctor um, on Instagram. Ran across, bought his book, ran across his book and his, his detox. But I was listening to him, and he says that when we rest, when we're sleeping, our body is detoxing. That's another way for our body to recoup and rebuild Absolutely. itself. Itself. So thank you for bringing up the health aspect of it, because yes, it's a healthy thing to just 
rest and get some and get sleep. Well, speaking of that, a lot of people don't realize that they are mm-hmm. walking around like zombies because they're sleep deprived. So how many friends do you know that will brag about, oh, I can fall asleep at the drop of a hat. I could be, I could sit down for one minute and I'm already out. Mm-hmm. That's nothing to brag about. Perhaps you might want to consult with a physician. Perhaps yeah. you are, you have narcolepsy mm. or you were just severely mm. sleep deprived mm-hmm. because that's mm-hmm. not normal. We shouldn't, mm. we shouldn't sit still for one minute and we're out like a light. Yeah. Yeah. Our body is just telling us, Hey, I need sleep. And then yeah. that's why people roll into sleep debt on the weekend. Yeah. Sleep debt it simply means that you are so tired when you get to Saturday and Sunday, mm-hmm. you are sleeping your life away because mm-hmm. you're making up all the debt that your body didn't get from the previous days that you missed on the sleep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Man, you guys, we back on health and talking about the body. Two weeks ago, I had a sit down conversation with Mia Bradford and we talked about how self-awareness helps us to get in tune with our bodies, mm-hmm. right? Because we have to be in tune with our bodies so we can know when we need rest or know when we're not getting the proper rest that we need right? and then and go and get the help that we need. The nap bar, you can come here and get ed- educated. Come on, come on. Yeah, you can get educated on um, how to get the proper rest so you can perform ideally in your job, your career, or your business. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the sacrifices that's behind. They're big. (laughs) Launching a business. I don't think people really understand the magnitude of the sacrifice that you have to make. Mm-hmm. Right, like mm-hmm. what you were doing before won't cut it. I mm-hmm. thought I was working hard in corporate mm-hmm. America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Not the case. It was all a dream. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit Okay, yeah, we ain't here for that. Is. We ain't here for okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I told you I was in love with that old school. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, like, and it's funny because. I had to realize that I was okay with walking away from a facade, like a facade Mm. as in, I, I wanted to, I want to look good. I Mm. want to make sure I'm looking good when I'm out in the world. Mm. And for me, looking good was these things, because it goes back to, Mm -hmm. I was at an intersection in my career in corporate America, Mm -hmm. although despite that, I'm very grateful for my time there because I have core competencies that I use every single of day, course. which people don't realize that those are transferable skills. So mm-hmm. they, you should be signing up for every single workshop that your company is going to yes. pay for yes. because you're going to need those for your business. But I came to realize that I was fulfilling this false sense of contribution and satisfaction because mm-hmm. I was at that intersection where they weren't aligned mm-hmm. with things. Yeah. So I went out and bought a Mercedes Benz, mm-hmm. but they got me dead. Uh, you know, I was doing all these things. Yeah. And then from a sacrifice standpoint, when I realized like I'm going to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I can't go into a, into a brand new business mm-hmm. with $80,000 of debt mm-hmm. driving a Benz. Mm. I can't do that. And so you have to, I had to get real and have a heart to heart conversation with my other half. And it was like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm doing. I made some great decisions in the past and I made some poor decisions in the past, but I've given mm-hmm. myself permission to forgive myself for the ones that didn't work out. And then honor my decisions for the ones that did work yes. out. Yes, I gotta give a hand to that because we gotta give ourselves permission to forgive ourselves for the decisions that did not work out. That's so. Yes. That's it. It's just an opportunity to do it differently next mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. and and really being okay with that. And so I tr- I don't longer drive. I'm not pushing the bins anymore. Not yeah. right now. Not, not right now. Not right now. Not right now. I'm pushing a Ford, but you know the difference is between that bins and the Ford. What's that? The Ford is in the business name. You see my foot. You can't see my foot. <laughs> Did y'all catch that? My foot is dangling. They didn't catch that. They didn't catch that. They weren't ready for that. They weren't ready for that. For that. You know, she, said, she said the difference between the Ford and the Benz is that the Ford is in the business thing. It's a company car, which means 100% of everything is written out. No, it's, it's, it's written off. off. Mm. 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 <laughs> When we know better, we do better, right? <laughs> so when we know better, we do better. I yeah. love that. And so we we went back, we got to the to the kitchen table mm-hmm. and wrote out all of our debt. And I said, I'm gonna sacrifice these rental properties that I had a small portfolio that I had built up from it was one of the great decisions I made yeah, yeah. because I needed them in that moment. Yeah. Sold those, used the equity to pay off debt and use it to to basically bootstrap 
net bar. Mm -hmm. Bootstrapping meaning that I didn't ask any money for from an outside investor because I wanted this vision to be what I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And listen, bootstrapping mm -hmm. is important because it shows someone, because eventually when you want to scale and mm -hmm. you want to grow your business, yeah. you're talking about millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have that sitting in their checking account or savings yeah. account, so you will need an investor to scale. But mm -hmm. the first thing an investor is going to ask is like, what did you contribute to the business? Absolutely. Oh, I contributed this amount because my mm -hmm. accountant, mm -hmm. my accountant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my accountant. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I hear <laughs> Do y'all hear her accountant? We meet on a monthly basis and mm -hmm. talk on the phone every week because you got to make sure that you build it with the end in mind. Yeah. So if I'm building out a multi-billion dollar business, mm. I got to make sure that I'm doing things today in the beginning. So mm -hmm. when we get to negotiating the end result of that bar from a legal standpoint, we are trademarked. We're doing all the things right now. So when we get down mm -hmm. that road and someone wants to write me a check for a hundred, for a billion dollars, mm -hmm. then it's just a matter of check, 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 letting the ink dry and then we're out because mm -hmm. we've done things right the first time. Right. But you can't you can't cash flow a lawyer, an accountant, uh, a PR. You can't all these things that you need an employee. Mm -hmm. You can't cash flow those things when you're covered in debt because then you won't have clarity. You'll be in brain fog because you're worried about how am I going to pay my bills, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is still a real problem that you're going to think about because most businesses don't. You're, you're it's a miracle. And you very is the gratitude is huge if you're generating revenue mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. three to six months, mm -hmm. but actually generating income mm -hmm. where you can put that money in your pocket, in pocket and not reallocate it back into the business. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that takes eighteen to twenty four months. Yeah, two completely different things. Are you familiar with Gary Vee? Of course. Okay, so Gary Vee talks about sacrificing too, like moving back in. You know with your mama, that's what you need to do for your business to, to come off the ground. You know, you got sacrifice means also staying at that corporate gig and Listen, doing the business on the side. There's nothing wrong with that. I, this was being done a year in before I left. I left okay. November 18th, okay. 2018. Okay. And we launched April 29th, 2019. So the planning started before you even left the corporate You gotta gig. use a corporate gig to finance your dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most people leave the corporate gig and then they go out and then they start to the research. <laughs> I researched on nights yeah. and weekends. I kept I kept late nights and early mornings, but that was mm -hmm. a part of my sacrifice. That was yeah. my sweat equity to yeah. myself to prove that this is a viable idea. A lot of people leave corporate and then they do the research and they realize, oh, this might not be a viable idea. There's a hundred other people out here doing the same thing and they've trademarked the name. Yeah. What am I going to do now? Yeah. You got to go back to corporate because you didn't plan well. It's all about strategy. It's all about strategy. And that's something that I can sit down and help you with as well. Because one of the things that you mentioned earlier was um, how you look in front of other people with the whole facade that she was putting on, mm -hmm. right? That goes back to my personal story as well. Because I came to Houston to go to law school all my life. I was supposed to be Perry Mason. All my life. Perry Mason. <laughs> Perry Mason. I wanted to be Perry Mason, but I got to law school and decided that law school wasn't for me. And I was going to do something else. Didn't know what that was because law school was on, the only plan that I had, the only plan. And, you know, so many people was invested in me going to law school and becoming an attorney. I joke with people all the time and say that I had a, a, a client list in the seventh grade because that's how much people believed in the fact that I was going to be an attorney. So I'm on this path and I get to law school and I'm like, okay, so yeah, what's next on the agenda? Not going back to law school was the hardest thing for me to do. Not because, you know, I, I'm like, oh my God, I have to be a lawyer, but because of the fact that I felt as though I was letting my mom down and I was letting down my family and my community. Because I'm the first person to do to go to, to you know graduate high school go to college you know i would have been the first attorney in a family but i had to really think about what i wanted right. to do that's important what my purpose is and a lot of us don't know what that is we do let me let me scratch that we know what it is we just choose not to embrace it because i we was born with our purpose right but we just don't want to embrace it because to embrace it means to look different from everybody else yep. because I believe our purpose sets us apart 
as well as set us up for what it is that, you know, God has planned for us to do. And so that was something that I need, I needed to do, which was do some self-reflection and some self inner work. So I didn't fall into this facade if you will yeah you got you you just have to be okay i said in the beginning of mm -hmm. at the very top of the show is yeah. you got to be comfortable in your skin you have to be overall like yeah. you have to be good with you mm -hmm. and be willing to look at yourself in the mirror every single day and say i'm proud of you yeah. and it's not about anyone else but it got to start with you you gotta love yourself first you gotta love yourself first and that's what self-awareness is all about which is something else that i talk about you know in my client one-on-one -on -one sessions because it's, it's so crazy how people's perceptions hold us back all the time. You'd be amazed how many times that comes up in my client sessions where, you know, mom doesn't think business is, you know, will work, you know, or Uncle Joe had a business that didn't work out. And so now he is discouraging you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's projecting. But that's something that we can that we can work on together you know i think also the missing piece is that people fail to really get mentors and sponsors uh, who yeah. are already doing what they're doing so like even mm -hmm. like your example it's like that's real like it's always mm -hmm. a family member yeah but rarely people are talking about that they're actively seeking a mentor or a sponsor who perhaps has already embarked on the journey that they're looking to do oh yeah. i want to do juice well find somebody that's juicing mm -hmm. in, in your in your space in your area I adopted the motto a very, very long time ago is that mm -hmm. why duplicate mediocrity when you can borrow genius mm. and the genius is your mentors and your sponsors. Mm -hmm. And these are people who, and I, I, I clarify a mentor is someone that I speak with yeah. and then a sponsor is someone who used to be a mentor, but now they're speaking about me when I'm not in a room. Gotcha. They're helping me. They're, they're giving me a deal. They're talking about me. They're helping me get a proposal when I don't even know about it because yeah. they're my advocate. Yeah. Because they know me as a person and they've groomed me in this uh -huh. mentorship so that they feel comfortable attaching their name, mm -hmm. my name, to uh -huh. their brand. Uh -huh. What are some other qualities that people can link in to, can look for when searching for a mentor, a mentor or a sponsor? outside of doing what it is that they want to do. Cause that's really important, you know, because the relationships that, you know, we, we make and we cultivate are, is important. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a critical component of it is yeah. it, it can't be transact transactional. It has mm -hmm. to be relational. It has to be a relationship. So if I had a penny for every time someone came to me and said, Hey, can you mention me? And I'm like, sure. Send me some dates, pitch me some dates that work for you. I would be, a, I would be a millionaire in pennies right now. Do they follow up? No. <coughs> Excuse me. No. What? Because you got to be hungry and you got to want it. And I think you were here earlier. You know, we interactions for me is mm -hmm. how we had a meeting. How prepared were you for the meeting? Mm -hmm. Are you proactive mm -hmm. or are you reactive? Mm -hmm. How bad do you want it? My grandfather taught me, taught me this a very long time ago. Yeah. So I was, it was a summer of me going into my senior year of high school. I was already getting scouted for basketball. So I somewhat had this big head, this ego, like, oh, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a basketball scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I'm sleeping in, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I should be at the gym practicing. Mm -hmm. My grandpa walks into my room, barges in, cause you know, I stayed up too late. Cause I had my own phone. It was the phone that light up when it ring. Like I stayed up way too late, <laughs> had my own line and everything. Yeah, yeah. But he barges in the room, was like, it's one o'clock in the, he's from Louisiana. So he yeah. had a little accent, baby, mm -hmm. it's one o'clock. You think the girl down the street is in her bed sleeping? Mm -hmm. No, nah, she at the gym shooting free throws. Been there for a couple of hours already. So basically his, 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 the core of his, what he was trying to tell me is like, don't let anyone out hustle you. Mm -hmm. And I've carried that with me throughout everything that I've got going on, because that's the truth of the matter. And I'm not yeah. saying like you got to hustle, hustle, like you can't ever sleep, but don't let the next person out hustle you like go and do the research, dedicate yeah. the time to research. So if you want to have a mentor, and you know your mentor is going to be at this networking event because they are a speaker on the panel. Well, know a little bit about that mentor. What college did they go to? Mm -hmm. Create some small talk that's a that's going to give you opportunity to relate mm -hmm. and connect. Mm -hmm. Don't hey, can you be my mentor? I got this business I want. Well, why would I want to do that? Tell me why. Who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? Right. What's your name? Because when I've had the best mentee mentor relationships mm -hmm. as a mentor, mm -hmm. it's it's the mentee didn't know it, but they were pouring into me just as much as I was mm -hmm. pouring into them. So two -way relationship. I, it was a, it's a two-way relationship. I'm not going to just continue to pour into you and I'm not getting back anything back. It's my time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. I can't get my time back. Yeah. You guys, pay attention to what she just said, because a lot of you um, are probably afraid to reach out and ask somebody to mentor you. But she said her mentees was pouring into her just as much as she was pouring into them. Sometimes we think that we don't have nothing to offer. Oh, we we uh, have so KG, much to offer. So we don't speak up and we don't reach out. Listen, I had, my little nephew was here last week, uh -huh. 13 years old. He taught me so many, yeah. listen, <laughs> he reminded me and taught me so many valuable lessons. A 13 year old poured into me oh. in a way that I'm sure yeah. he poured in more than I poured into him. My cup is overflowing. His is probably half full right now. Oh, wow. That's 13. Amazing. So imagine somebody has something to give. Yeah, yeah. And when you're talking earlier, uh, Will Smith popped up in my head because he has that saying, if you stay ready, you never got to get ready. Hey, that's 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 Oprah's definition. My auntie, oh, you know, is Oprah. Uh -huh. Her definition of success is uh -huh. preparation meets opportunity. So if you're prepared, uh -huh. prepared. and the opportunity pops up, uh -huh. uh, circles around, uh -huh. you're ready. You're ready. It's go time. It's go time because you never know who's talking about you in other rooms. You know, you know, Patrice Washington on Instagram. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay, you have to check her out. But she says all the time that there's always somebody's watching you who has the power to bless you. What are they watching you do? Mm, so good. if you always working on your craft and doing your research, like KG said, you know, people will reach out and help. People like to help people that's helping themselves. They, they do. <laughs> it, I'm the same way. Yeah. I, because I legit am rooting for everyone to win because mm -hmm. I understand that there's no reason for us to be out here competing. I understand that mm -hmm. there's enough pot for everyone to get full and have enough left over so mm -hmm. we can break these generational curses yeah. and birth a generation of wealth. Yeah, That's the really the only way we're going to be able to do it. We got 400 plus years we got to make up. Well, mm -hmm. we can do it if we decide to band together and collaborate yeah, and partner and partner why not we can yeah. be in the same industry and still provide something there's a there's a gift you can bring to the table yeah absolutely so to close out give us some tips on how we can launch a business that's completely different from the norm i think i could probably wrap up what we've talked about number one mm -hmm. is do your research mm -hmm. what what well, let me take it a step back okay what are you passionate about there you go what, what, where are you at at the crux of your intersection that will allow for you to have valuable contribution mm -hmm. and satisfaction all at the same time? Mm -hmm. What is that? Like, mind map it out. Write it out. Like, what do I love doing? Mm -hmm. Hint, hint, it's probably service-based. Perhaps. Because we're here to serve. And then after we, after we identify that, step two, let's go ahead and, and, and commit to assembling our advisory board. Yeah. Who are these? Who, who's the mentors, the sponsors who we can share? Who have already, who's in this industry already, that can mm -hmm. give us some advice on mm -hmm. how to maneuver? So perhaps we could shave. It maybe took them, took them ten years. Maybe by just sitting at their feet and learning as a as a student and let yeah. them be the coach. Yeah. Maybe we could shave five years off of it. Mm. And then from there, it's you got to commit to the research. What's got, what what root problem? And I didn't say just the problem, the root. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. what's the root of the problem that you're solving? Mm -hmm. You go out here and create another business in a saturated market and you're solving a problem. But if you get to the root of it, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to make sure you have residual income. Yeah. And people are going to want to collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are probably my top. Those are three. I think those are yeah. three. Those are probably my top three things. Thank you for that. Yeah, those, were, those, were, those were really good. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Bonus. Last but not bonus. least. Uh -huh. You have two more. Okay. Make sure you're staying grounded. Mm. Grounded from, mm -hmm. uh, gr grounded in the, in the space of protecting your energy, but also not being afraid to give it away and knowing that you're going to be able to replace it. Mm. Not be afraid to give it away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got that today. Okay. I got that today. Yeah, in therapy. Okay. Therapy is real. Therapy we to, as well. Y'all know. We need to talk epic. about it, but yeah. that's, it, I don't know how else we go through life. Yeah and be the human beings we were designed to be. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is to assemble your your team. Mm -hmm. Assemble your team fast. Most people say, oh, I won't be able to afford to hire anybody. Listen, we weren't, a, we haven't been able to grow in the manner we had if I hadn't brought on D. Fast. Mm -hmm. Because he allows me to work on the business and not in the business. Mm -hmm. I can't work on the business. I can't work in the business and, and, and on and all at the same time. I was mm -hmm. attempting to do that and nothing was happening. When things started to really move, and someone who believes in the vision. Mm -hmm. So if, if if he and I have a falling out, yeah, 
because humans do from time to time. We do. I trust that things will continue to move forward because he believes in the vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just about me, KG. It's yeah. the vision of Navar. Like he gets it. He gets it. And surrounding yourself with people who get it. Yeah. Not just Have not a family member. <laughs> That's a whole nother. That's a whole, that's a whole nother episode. Oh, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> but having a team, you know, that's real. I was literally talking to a friend on Saturday about some of the woes of entrepreneurship. And she was just like, could you want to go ahead and make that investment and hire somebody on? I was like, yeah, because I'm just at that business, at the place in my business where in order for me to hit that next level, I'm going to have to bring somebody on. You know, I, I, it's equivalent to you have kids. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So you have mm -hmm. people who have kids. Yeah. And I always ask, like, for example, Camille, Camille, one of her best friends, uh -huh. I remember when she was on kid number two, I think she's on number three, but she's already had number three now. Okay. But on number two, she was like, yeah, daycare is like more than our mortgage. And I was like, whoa, how, how do you budget for that? Like, how? 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 How, 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 how does that even happen? <laughs> Jesus. But you know what? It's the same way. It's equivalent when you're an entrepreneur. It's equivalent to having a kid, and you don't know how you're gonna feed them, but you do. Hiring on an employee is the same way. The numbers might not make sense, but you will figure out. You will figure out a way to make sure that they're eating as well. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. they're gonna free you up from to, from being in the space to going out and getting the deals that's gonna help. That's them. gonna help them eat. I and needed to eat. hear that. Yeah. I needed to hear that today. Thank you for that. You got it.